Hello, everyone. Welcome to the current student panel. We're so excited for you all to be here. Um, we're just going to give it a minute or two for people to arrive. Um, so in the meantime, if you'd like to put in what country and city you're joining us from today, that would be wonderful. Um, and also, if you have any questions that you've come to this panel with, feel free to go ahead and put them into the Q&A box or into the chat. I will be monitoring those as we go along and I can ask those questions to our panelists as we go. So feel free to do that. Um, for those of you just joining in, I was just mentioning how we're gonna get started in just a few minutes. Um, if Before we get started, if you could go ahead and let us know what country and city you're joining us from um, into the chat, that would be wonderful. We'd love to know what country you're in or what city you're in specifically. Um, so go ahead and put that into the chat and feel free if you've come with questions for our panelists, specific questions like what's been the experience of studying abroad during COVID, things like that. Go ahead and put that into the chat or into the Q&A box and we can ask about that. Um, I don't see anyone putting their country or city yet into the chat, so feel free to do that before we get started. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, so I can start and say that. I see we have a Philly, Philadelphia, USA, um, Boone, United States. Uh, we have Amanda from Sweden, Boise, Idaho, Charlotte, North Carolina, Seattle, United States. We've got someone from Puerto Rico, Miguel. Welcome everyone. Um, We're gonna get started in just a few seconds. We have someone else from Germany. Welcome. Um, and as I mentioned, feel free to go ahead and put into the Q&A or into the chat any questions that you're thinking about asking our panelists um, as we get started. But again, welcome. If you're just now joining, it looks like we have had a couple people join in. Um, go ahead and put where you're coming from, what your city and country is into the chat. Um, feel free to share that and we can go ahead and get started. So hello everyone and welcome to our current student panel. I'm Bailey Capford and I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager at ISEP and I will be your moderator for this panel discussion. Um, we're excited to have you all join us today um, and we'll be hearing from three of our ISEP students who are currently on programs in the US and Asia. Um, I'm afraid that Julia and one of our panelists studying, one of our panelists studying at Agnes Dot was unexpectedly unable to make it tonight. But for our other three panelists, we do have questions prepared for them, but this is really an opportunity for you all to ask questions that you have, whether it be about arriving in your host country, taking classes, making friends, things like that. So please use the Q&A feature or the chat box to ask any questions that you have. Um, so now I'm pleased to introduce you to our three lovely panelists. We have Emma Vasek, who is from Nebraska Wesleyan University and is studying at Korea University in Seoul, South Korea. She is a political science major. We have Christina Selimik from Carl Frazen University, and she is studying in Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff, Arizona. She is a double major in secondary education for English and biology. And we have Colleen Linoff from uh, UPJV in France, and she is studying at Uni Utah State University in Logan, Utah. Um, she is a ecology major. So thank you all so much for being here. I'm really excited to talk to you about your study abroad experiences so far. Um, so the first question that I have, I'd love to hear from our panelists about an anecdote or story highlighting a pivotal moment during your study abroad experience. Um, so let's start with Christina. Christina, would you like to kick us off? Um, wow, yeah, hi, nice to meet you, first of all, and thanks for, for being here and inviting me. Um, it's really difficult to think of like one specific moment, I would say, um, but I feel like the first like, anecdote or story that comes to my mind is my like arrival at NAU because I mean like based on what you like saw or experienced on social media or movies you have this like 
image in your head what it what it is like studying at an American university. But I feel like coming here, it's so much more and different than I expected. And it was just like, like so cool to come here and see the campus and everything is so close together, which is so different from home. Like everything is on one place and um, you have so many things that you can like do or try. So I feel like arriving here and being on campus was like my first main experience, I would say. It's great to hear. It's so, so wonderful to hear that you're doing well and enjoying your time so far. Um, Colleen, would you like to go next? Uh, yes, hi everyone. So I would say uh, an anecdote about here is was like the first day of snow. So we had snow two weeks ago and it was like crazy. Everybody was surprised because it wasn't supposed to happen this early. Uh, and like it was very late in the day and because most of my friends are also international, we are all in the same building. So like at 11 p.m. we all went outside play with the snow, sliding uh, in campus, and it was just really funny. And I think I will, um, yeah, I will remember this moment because it was really funny and a really good bonding experience. Yeah. Great, and Emma, would you like to go next? Yeah, one of the coolest things about being here in Seoul is like the mix of historical and like big city things all in one area and so like me and my roommates we would go on top of this really big mountain and look over the city and there's also a historic wall that used to border the entire city there and so just being able to see like the mix of everything especially since i'm from a smaller town um seeing the huge city that's even bigger than new york and seeing the history in the palaces is just, it's really interesting and really like something that is new to me. <laughs> and being able to learn about it also while I'm here is just part of the experience as well. I love hearing that when small town folks get to go abroad to a big city, it's, it's really fun to hear about the differences between small town and, and big city life. Um, so we're getting a lot of questions already from attendees, which is great. Thank you all for your questions. Um, I think I'm going to ask one more of my questions and then I'll jump into the questions that are coming in through the, the Q&A. Um, so I, the question that I have is just what is one of your favorite experiences so far, whether that be a travel experience, um, interacting with locals, a uh, cultural event, something like that. And anyone can jump in and start if you think. Uh, okay, I'll go first. So I think you can see the picture. I went to Yellowstone. Uh, it was really a dream for me to, to go there. And because I'm in Utah, I'm so close to a lot of national parks. And this is one of the reasons I choose I chose Utah. So I love exploring. And so I went to Yellowstone and uh, for fall break a week ago, I also went to three other national park. It was a crazy experience. I went with um, four of my international friends. So it's a, other like people from England, England, France, Austria. We all went to Archie's National Park, maybe you know, um, Zion National Park and Bryce National Park. And it was really beautiful. I've never seen something like this in my country, so it was very different. I loved it, and I'm so happy that I went. <laughs> yeah, I can jump in here because I kind of have a similar thing I want to talk about, also based on my on my picture that I chose. Because for me, it's similar. I chose NAU also because of like being so close to so many different places you can like explore. And for me, it was that one uh, road trip we did. And it was like a weekend uh, where we went to uh, Antelope Canyon. So we went up north of Arizona and in also um, in the direction of Utah. So Antelope Canyon and also Horseshoe Bend, which was where the picture was taken, the one um, on the PowerPoint. 
Um, those were one of the most beautiful places that I've seen so far. I would say I've never seen something like this before. And it was so cool because we were 15 um, international students who went together and we were camping um, like right between the canyons and it was, it was just an amazing experience. Mine also has to do with the travel experience, but since I'm in South Korea, which is a fairly small country, we also have traveled outside of Seoul twice. Uh, we took a flight to Jeju Island pretty early in the semester and it was a really great experience because I got to bond with my four other exchange student friends since we were all sharing the same suite in this hotel and just being able to see the ocean since I'm from Nebraska and being able to we actually flew in during a typhoon so bond over these scary moments <laughs> but to do that and then also like visit all the historical places, the oceans, the cool snack areas. Like it was all just such an experience that I would not get to have back home. And being able to like bond with everyone a lot closer during that time was also one of my favorite moments. Sounds like you all are having some really fun adventures. I'm jealous actually, because I love going like national parks and and traveling and doing things like that so great good for you um so we're getting a lot of questions for emma about south korea so emma my next question is specifically for you um how was your arrival experience in korea and specifically your two-week quarantine Ah, yes. So I was very stressed out when I was arriving, mostly because I've never traveled anywhere before out of the country. But I brought like a whole folder of paperwork that I had to turn in and pretty much they took it from there. So you, you got in line, you went through customs. And if I ever looked confused, someone would come and help me, which was really nice especially like we have to download an app on our phone that tracks where you are during quarantine so you aren't allowed to leave the room and they helped me download the app fill out all of the like forms so i knew i was being taken care of which was very nice especially when i was so nervous but uh korea university took me to the dorms and that's where i quarantined for two weeks they gave me food and snacks and like stuff that I needed for the two weeks, which was pretty long. But since I was really jet lagged, I basically slept for the first three days. <laughs> and then after that, it was a lot of calling my family and friends since I had all the time in the world <laughs> and reading books, watching TV shows, practicing like language while I was being quarantined. And finally, at the end, you get to go out and get your COVID test, which was like your first taste of freedom for a bit. <laughs> and then it was kind of nice because being trapped for two weeks, you also like really um, appreciate your freedom when you're free <laughs> and being able to go see everything. So that's how it went for me. Thanks for sharing that, Emma. And I know there was um, some other questions about uh, the, just the process of finding a place to quarantine. Um, and that kind of differs based on your host university in Korea. So what I'd recommend is to get in touch with your ISEP student services officer, which I believe would be Dondre Hess for South Korea. You can find the contact information in your ISEP account. It's under the, I think it should be in the dashboard or it says on the left-hand side, ISEP contacts. Um, or your ISEP coordinator's contact will also be there. So you can contact either of those folks or both of them to find out more information about the quarantine process for your specific host institution. Um, so thanks for those questions. Um, and here's a good one I think for everyone is, um, what are some tips to making friends during COVID. Um, and one person asked specifically in Korea, um, how were you able to connect with others in a social setting rather than just academic? So we'll let um, Christina and Colleen start first. And then Emma, if you wanna address that question specifically, the second question, that'd be great. 
So um, at NAU, I feel like it was really easy for me to make friends because also um, in the dorm where I'm living, it's called Campus Heights. Um, most of the people who, who live here are international students who arrived at the same time as I was. So it was fairly easy to, to make friends because everyone was just around each other and everyone was new. So we were all kind of in the same place, I would say. And also NAU um, had a lot of like events, social events in the beginning where you meet other internationals. So it was fairly easy to, to meet people. And other than that, I would say um, like NAU has a lot of uh, student clubs and organizations you can join. There, I think there are over 300 clubs and organizations for students where you can actually join. So if you just join based on your in interest in, in some of those clubs, even if you only show up in the first meeting and then decided you don't have time for it, you still get to meet new people and you have the chance to to connect with other other people, even like locals. So I feel like it's fairly easy to meet people. Yeah. Uh, well, for me, it's exactly the same. Uh, every one of my friends lives in the same building as me. So it's like the international building kind of. So like, for example, my roommate is from England and one of my neighbor is from Italy, Spain, everything like this. So we all really became friends really easily because we, uh, we were all in the same situation. And we also had a lot of events to just, uh, yeah, to know people, to make friends. Uh, we also have a lot of club, it's exactly the same. So it's really easy to make friends. You don't have to worry about that. And everybody is so welcoming. They want to know about you because you're a foreign student. So they want to know everything about you. And yeah, that's it. For me, it's also a similar story. I live in like one of the foreign dorms. There's two here at Korea University. And that's how you get to meet a lot of people. I had three roommates at the beginning and we all were from America. And so we kind of bonded over that but from different areas. And then another thing that really pops out about Korea, at least, is there's this like group chat culture where um, when I came here, I was in like four or five group chats about studying abroad in Korea with like anywhere from 50 to like 200 people. <laughs> and sometimes they're just like, hey, let's, let's go out. Like, let's go explore this place. And a couple people join in. And then like you meet them. And since you're all in the same situation, we're all in a new country, we're all experiencing things. You kind of are able to make this instant connection. And we even have a rival university to Korea University and there's like group chats with them as well. And so meeting up with, with Yonsei students, which is also in ISEP school, <laughs> is also another popular thing that we do in Korea. So being able to meet people from dorms, group chats, and classes, stuff like that. That's that's what I've been doing at least. Great. Well, it's great to hear that you all are being able to connect with other people and attend events and do things like that despite COVID. The world is going back to normal little by little, and it's, it's definitely exciting. <laughs> um, okay, next question is, is there something that you wish you knew before you went on your exchange? So anyone can answer this one. I guess I could start with, I did kind of know this, but um, knowing the language and some of the like, little cultural aspects in Korea, which I, I did quite a bit of research, but coming here, I would like to have really given a, a good baseline to the language so I could feel more comfortable for sure. And a few things like, like clothing in Korea is also quite important to know before you come here as well. So for me, something that was maybe a bit different or which I didn't expect to be like that was like classes 
at university because just because I'm from Austria and from a European university, I feel like class the cl whole class structure is so different. And here at NEU, I you just have like a few classes, but they are more intense, and you have them twice a week, and you get a lot of homework and quizzes and assignments. So I feel like a lot of European uh, international students uh, were a bit overwhelmed with that at the beginning, just because it's different than from home. But also at the same time, it's really cool because you always keep up with the work and you engage with the subjects really easily and like a lot. And yeah, I feel like now I'm really comfortable with that. But um, at the beginning, it was just a bit overwhelming, I would say. I hear that a lot about uh, European students coming to the US. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. Um, is the adapting from different types of education systems. Um, okay, for the next question, I'm gonna try to put kind of three questions into one question. So if it doesn't make sense, you can just let me know. But um, the first part of it is how long are you staying in your study abroad experience? Um, and given your current experience, do you wish you could remain lo longer and extend your time if you could, and then are all of your classes in person? Um, I'm gonna start. I'm staying here just for the full semester, but I'm not gonna lie, I love it so much. Um, <clears throat> if I could, I would stay a year, but I really want to spend Christmas with my family, and I don't think I can stay away from my family a whole year, so, but I really like it here. It's like my second home now. And for my classes, so I have four classes in total, and two of them are online and two of them are face-to-face. -face. So um, I like it that way. Uh, it's like the bigger classes are online, so this is why, and the smaller classes are face-to-face. -face. But it's really well organized. Um, like the professors are really trying to help us when it's online to help us keep up on the work and not being late on watching lectures and everything. So yeah, that's it for me. Yeah, do you wanna go ahead? Okay, um, yeah, for me it was uh, kind of different, I would say, uh, kind of similar. I'm also only staying for the fall semester because I plan to graduate in summer, so I want to finish my bachelor's. <laughs> and, but of course, if I had the chance, I would love to stay longer, just because I feel like there's so much to do and so much to see that you cannot like fit into only the fall semester, because it's just too short <laughs> to do that. Um, and for my classes, actually, all of my classes are in person. Um, but for most of them, I would have the opportunity to go online and join via Zoom or whatever platform they use, just because um, of the current situation with the pandemic. So I feel like it's good to have that option, but I also like that classes are being in person again. So I'm at Korea University for a year and I do really, really enjoy it here. I'm very happy that I'm here for a year, of course, because I was able to with my class schedule and everything back at home. And there's so much to do, not even just in Seoul, but in the entire country. So I'm glad I'll be able to use all that time wisely. <laughs> and then I also have all my classes online. Korea is still in one of the harshest phases of COVID social distancing. So we can't have large gatherings. So all classes are online, no matter what school you're in right now, but they are opening up in two days a little bit. So we'll, we'll see how that goes for my next semester here as well. Great, and what cultural experiences do you think have made your study abroad process stand out? And how do you think this will affect you beyond the exchange? That's such a good question. <laughs> Thank you, Miguel, that's a really, Really good question. So it's a two-parter. I'll read it again. What cultural experiences do you think have made your study abroad process stand out? And how do you think this will affect you beyond the exchange? Um, so I didn't know coming here that Utah was actually 
very different from the rest of the United States. I actually think every state is kind of different, but I didn't know Utah was this different, people told me. So it's a state very, they have a very religious uh, culture and everything. So I didn't know, I discovered here. And people are so nice, they always want to help us, um, especially if you're new. And yeah, they're really nice. And uh, like the city I'm in, in Logan, it's really, really safe. Like there is police all the time. <laughs> and the campus is really safe too. Uh, and I think this is different, very different from where I am. Um, not to say that my country isn't safe, but it's very different. And I think when I'm coming back home, it's going to be really weird, but in a good way. I'm going to have, um, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing something really different here. So I'm just really happy to see this here. People are so nice. I'm becoming so nice too. <laughs> I'm always asking random stranger how they are and uh, how their day are. And yeah, complimenting everybody. That's something we don't do at home. So I really like it here. Yeah, for me, it's two things I would say that stand out um, based on cultural experiences. I would say, first of all, food, because um, being in Arizona and being close to Mexico, we have really good Mexican food here. So that's one thing I will definitely miss when I go back home. And uh, second of all, I would say, yeah, all the events and cultural like traditions and stuff that we don't have in Europe or specifically in Austria, such as only uh, at university, like uh, I think it was two weeks ago, we had like the homecoming weekend, which was a completely new experience to me. We had a huge carnival with like rides and a Ferris wheel and everything. So that's something that I've like never had at the university before. So that was kind of cool. And also only being at football games and stuff like that. That's a whole new experience for me, I would say. And also now in fall, um, upcoming now is Halloween. And uh, I don't know, everything around like that. I think it's just new and, and different for me, which makes it kind of exciting. And I would say, yeah, based on that, I will take a lot of experiences with me home and like, also have a different perspective on the US, I would say. For me, I feel like I'm kind of focusing on the small things at least, but there's like some small cultural differences, like the respect towards professors and teachers that in America, it's not that we don't respect them, but it's more of a like friendship with your, with your professors and teachers. And like, you can have, banter and all this here but in Korea it is a bit different <laughs> the food situation is also different the food is so good like I love the Korean food but also I miss the saltiness of American food <laughs> because a lot of things here are sweeter than back home so I do miss that and then possibly the last thing is kind of not exactly completely re related to Korea, but like I'm a lot more out of place in Korea than if I was studying abroad in Europe or anywhere else. And just the feeling of like me being in the spotlight sometimes and having to be aware of like myself and my actions at all times, because it reflects on like on me and my country and everything. So being able to make sure that like if I'm having my mask down, that's it's a worse thing to be doing in, in Korea than back in America, <laughs> but also the culture of following COVID guidelines, like very, very strictly. And there are police that walk around just for, for COVID regulations in Korea here, which has been fine. Like we all follow everything, but it's also very different from back home where in Nebraska, it's not like strictly regulated, but it's just suggested. It's really interesting to hear the perspectives on what's been different from what you're all used to. So thanks for sharing that. 
Um, and the next questions are actually two that I'm going to answer. <laughs> um, so the first one was, how can future study abroad students join panels like these to further the mission of student exchanges? Um, the answer is, email me and I can help you. <laughs> so I'm going to put my email into the chat because we would love to have more enthusiastic students participate in these panels or become digital ambassadors, which is basically someone who helps us with producing uh, photo content on Instagram, potentially videos, um, things like that while you're abroad. So if you're, especially if you're going abroad next semester, um, now would be a great time to email me. I'm gonna put my email into the chat and let me know that you're interested and I can send you some more information. Um, so I just put my email into the chat. Hopefully everyone can see that. Um, and then the other question was, how did you apply for the visa required? I know what the requirement forms and documents are, but I do not know where or how I can turn it in to get the visa. Um, so that one varies by location and is something that's changing. So I would rather, I prefer the uh, panelists not answer that and instead send you the link to our country handbooks, which outlines the process for each country for the visa. And if you have any questions about that, as I mentioned, contact your student services officer. If you're going to South Korea, it should be Dondre um, Hess. And if you're going to the US, it should be Gretchen McCarthy. Like I said, in your ISEP student account, you can find their information and they can help you navigate how to get, um, how to go where you need to go, do what you need to do, all that jazz. So definitely utilize those resources. Um, so the next question is for Christina and Colleen. Do you have any tips for planning a road trip in the area of California, Arizona, Arizona, Utah, i.e. routes, sleeping places, sightseeing spots, needed time, anything like that? And I'll go ahead and mention that road trips are not as short as you imagine. Driving around the U.S. takes a lot of time. So that's the first thing I'll say. But Christina and Colleen, do you have anything to mention about that? Um, so for me, I would say first thing you need to do is choose the good person you want to go with because you're just going to spend a lot of time with them in the car. So that can be a weird tip, but yeah, that, that's what I would say. And then, so we didn't, uh, none of us had a car, so we had to rent a car. And if you're going to the US, you have to know that it's going to be cheaper to rent a car if you're 26 or older than 25 so we had a friend that is 26 <laughs> so that was the good friend that he drove the whole way and it was really nice uh, it was really nice of him to do that and what else um route sleeping place so for the routes we just looked on internet you have so many options uh, when we went to yellowstone you have a loop to do in yellowstone we just did the loop and it was really good um, and then, yeah, sleeping place. We, every time we slept into like very cheap motel, <laughs> at first we were very scared it was gonna be so bad, but it was actually really good. And yeah, so my um, trip in fall break, ah, my trip in fall break um, in Southern Utah, we slept in two different motels, it was, really good one really ex uh, not expensive we just found them on uh, like TripAdvisor you can find good yeah and uh, what else time so for Yellowstone we we were six hours away I think and we just did it in a weekend so <laughs> that was really um, hard to do but we did it so <laughs> and for sa my southern Utah trip we did six national parks uh, three national parks in three days so I wouldn't recommend it but we didn't have uh, more time but it was it was good <laughs> and was, I just saw the, the question uh, we don't need uh, I mean for us I'm pretty sure it's the same in the whole US but we don't need an international driver license just your driving license from Europe works Yes, um, so Colleen basically answered all the questions already. <laughs> but um, yeah, for the driver's license, 
testing, at least in Arizona, you can do a driver's license, an Arizona driver's license really cheap. It's, I think it's $25 or something. So it's not a big deal to do it if you want to have one. It's also like a nice souvenir to take home, um, but you don't have to. So we were also renting cars and we had our European driver's license, which was fine actually. Um, other than that, yeah. So the car thing can be an issue, but renting a car is kind of easy, I would say. So we never had like big problems with that. And um, you just have to spend a little amount of money. But if you like get a full car with five people, it's fine because you can just split the cost. So I would say it's not that much of an issue to do that. Um, other than that, yeah, for like places to stay, I would say we, um, uh, on one road trip, we did um, camping for two nights, which is also an uh, uh, possibility to do if you like are on a budget and don't wanna spend a lot of money on like staying somewhere. Um, and if you're like fine with sleeping in a tent or something, um, that's um, definitely something you can do, especially in like Arizona or Utah because there are a lot of like really beautiful camping sites where you can stay, I would say. Um, other than that, yeah, we also just picked uh, kind of cheap uh, hotels or hostels. Like if you stay in a city, I would say hostels are a good like option to do, um, stay somewhere where it's um, rather not that expensive. And yeah, what else? Um, I wouldn't say that I could like now recommend a specific route or something, but I do um, have a lot of like places where I've been so far. So you can also like write me on Instagram or something if there's like specific questions about that. Um, but other than that, I would say also the time issue is something that you definitely have to keep in mind so that you don't over plan a weekend and um, similar to Emma, I would say we also have like a lot of like WhatsApp groups or like um, group chats where people all, always like say, hey, I want to go to this place or I want to do that trip and you can always join and, and so it's kind of easy, I would say, to plan those things. Great, and uh, I want to reiterate that sometimes things are different for different states, so if you are renting a car, just double check what the, the requirements are for your state and for look at the car rental um, agreement because it'll have information there as well. Great, thanks for that question. Um, so we have a couple questions for Emma. Um, Emma, you've kind of already answered part of this question. So I'm just gonna edit it a bit. Um, so what was it like adjusting to Korea when you first got there and how has it been um, if you haven't, if you don't speak a lot of Korean, you think it would be difficult navigating being an English speaker? So when I first got here, I kind of used a little bit of quarantine time to adjust at least, or at least like get in the mindset to be ready and, and get out there. And once I was out, like, I don't know, I think I was just quite overwhelmed by how big the city was and um like how busy it was everywhere i didn't really expect that but the overwhelming like if you find good people to be with during that time it makes it a lot easier and i actually have one friend here in korea who studied abroad at my home university and so she's back here and she showed me around the first day took me to the store to get stuff and that was like extremely helpful and really helped like calm my nerves down a little bit and I know like how to read Korean and I know basic phrases that I need to know as well like how to like order things how to say yes no how to ask questions which is very very helpful but most of the time there are a lot of exchange students here that I know that don't really know any Korean at all and they can get by as well there are a decent amount of English speakers I would not count on that but it would be very useful if like before you come here to learn the Korean alphabet, like Hangul, just so you can pronounce things like on the menu or so you can maybe ask a question or start to recognize things. 
and especially like read the signs to the restaurants on the door and stuff so you know where you're going and what food you're getting because asking for less spicy food is very important here it is very spicy here but after adjusting and kind of getting in the rhythm of things i've been trying to speak a lot more uh, korean to people to make sure that i'm practicing as well and it makes me feel a lot more comfortable now after three, three and a half months. Um, the initial shock of the city has, it's, it's diminished a little bit, but still there's so many places to see that it's still like a great time. And there's so many new experiences to figure out and find. And there's always, if you are struggling Korea, like most of the time helps you. <laughs> People will help you. There was one time I was ordering food and I did not know how to say take out. And so I was struggling with it. And some person just walked up and they're like, what do you need help saying? And I was like, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> so it was so kind of them. And it really helps the transition become easier. Yeah, don't be afraid to ask for help because it's always a good go-to thing to do if and people everywhere are gonna be helpful for the most part <laughs> so that's all that's good advice um the next question is we have someone who's never gone abroad before and they're wondering how you packed um and one thing that i'll note here is that this person says they're going to japan um, in your acceptance package, also make a note of what it says is included in your stay. So sometimes you'll have towels included, so you won't have to worry about bringing those or buying them when you get there, um, bedding, things like that. So check that so that you know if you want to try to pack it or if you want to try to buy it when you get there. Um, so that's one thing to note. But Emma, Colleen, and Christina, do you have a perspective on the question about packing? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, for packing, I would say it depends where you're going. But for example, for me, I had to pack um, like clothes from like a hot weather, but also for a, like very cold weather because it's going to be very cold soon. So you have to think about that, I would say. And yeah, look up if you need linings or beddings or anything. Thing. it's very important but I would say not to worry too much because I was very stressed about like forgetting so many things but you can buy everything here actually you're not going on another planet you're just going on in another country so you can always find uh, what you want in your study abroad country and just pack like you're going on a big trip I don't know and yeah you can find a lot of, of lists on what to pack online and yeah, not stressed for that. <laughs> yeah, I would also say just um, check the requirements or the, the things um, from your specific dorm, which are included and which things are not included. Because for me, for example, I had to bring my own bed sheets and also like kitchen supplies and stuff like that. So that was not included. But I actually didn't take it with me to the US. I just bought it here, which was way easier and took less um less uh space in my in my suitcase, I would say. And other than that, yeah, just don't worry that much. Maybe check weather conditions and don't take too much because it can be a bit exhausting when traveling for a long time. So I would say rather pack not that much and yeah, don't worry that much. It's gonna be fine. Yeah, I agree with both of them. Um, in South Korea, the weather is pretty similar to back in Nebraska, but it got so cold so quickly here. Um, so definitely make sure to check like the weather and you need to bring a big coat, especially in, in a lot of countries that are get colder. I would recommend, I brought like four or five pairs of shoes, but I only wear my tennis shoes every day because I'm walking so much. So maybe like bring a couple pairs, but you don't need to bring as many as I did because I've only worn other ones a couple of times, <laughs> if at all, especially because our dorm is on a huge hill. So I'm not gonna walk up 
that hill in some bad shoes. But also, I would say I did bring a lot of books since I'm also in quarant. I was in quarantine for a while. And clothes, you can get a lot of clothes anywhere that you go. Like in America, in Korea, clothes are pretty cheap here. So I wouldn't say don't worry too much about packing a bunch of clothes, especially in countries where clothes might be cheaper than America or there might be like better online options as well. And there's also a store called Daiso in Korea and it's like, it's almost like a dollar store Walmart. I don't know how to explain it. Everything you've ever needed is inside, but nothing is more than $5. So it's very helpful, especially when you get towels, when you get like pillows and blankets and everything. So I would recommend like asking maybe a local where the best place to go, the cheapest place to go is as well. That place sounds lovely. I <laughs> love cheap discount stores. Um, okay, so we have a lot of questions about classes. So I guess I'll make this a three-part question kind of. What was your course registration like? What has your class experience lit been like? And have the classes been more or less difficult than back in your home countries? Um, so for the reg registration process, I think it depends on each university. But for me, we just had to do it on the website. Uh, at, like, but you have to do it very early. Like when they send the email to you, do it this day because sometimes the class that you would want to to choose is gonna be full really, really like quickly. So yeah, I would say just do it the day you receive the email. And um, the difference, I would say in Europe or in France, um, the class are a little bit harder. Here, for example, we have, I have two classes where the tests are open book. It's something we would never have at home. You have to learn everything and here you can just have your notes next to you. So I like this, I'm not gonna lie. This is really a good thing. And I have one classes, I would say it's the same amount of work as at home. So it's okay. And yeah, I don't know what else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for me, for the class registration, um, I actually, it was a bit different. I couldn't like just simply register online, but I had to um, correspond with my advisor here at NAU from the CIE, which is like the Center for International Education. Um, but other than that, it was fairly easy. I just picked the classes that I want to take online and, and wrote an email about it. And that person, like my advisor, um, registered me in, that cl in those classes. And um, yeah, I would also say like choose rather early because otherwise you might not get into the class you want to be. Um, and for um, classes, like experience, I would say um, class, like having the classes um, at university are a good way to meet other like locals, like Americans, because I feel like that's the, that's the um, point where you're not like always around other internationals. So you're not like in this, this international bubble. So like a lot of my like American friends, I would say I met through being with them in the same class. And um, also for like differences then um, compared to my um, home university, I would say, yeah, as I already said, it's just like a different structure. You get a lot of like assignments and homework um, throughout the week. But other than that, I would say it's fine. I'm not gonna lie. The class registration was probably one of the most stressful times I've had in Korea so far. Um, here it is, it's, the process is fairly similar back to in the US, like where you sign up online, except there's three different like rounds. In the first round, I got one class. In the second round, I got one class. And so I still did not have the same, like I did not have enough credits to take like my college 
a credit level or whatever. So I was very stressed out during that time period, especially because it wasn't like I couldn't get my first choices. I couldn't do that, which I had a whole list of like six or seven extras. But afterwards, during the add and drop period, that's when everyone basically just all the exchange students are allowed in to the classes. So it worked out in the end. But during the time, it was very stressful because it, it just didn't work exactly how I thought it was going to. <laughs> I am in one of the more competitive class like majors. So I do know that is a thing. But in Korea, generally, class signups is very like quick. I clicked on one class and all the rest of them were full. So it is a lot more competitive here, but the school did help out. Like you fill a petition, you get into this class. So it all worked out in the end. And classes in South Korea are definitely more lecture-based. And then you take your midterm and your final and your paper, and that's like your grade which in America, it's a lot more like homework based and paper based. So it is a little bit different for me, but I do like the setup, especially because lectures, I feel like I'm learning a lot. And a lot of my classes back home is um, like smaller classrooms as well. So here it's a lot bigger classrooms and you get to learn from other people and other cultures within the like groups that you're in as well. Okay, and uh, I should mention that this is going to be different for different host universities. So all I recommend is just practicing how quick you can hit your mouse button, because <laughs> most of them it will be kind of quick. You have you get an email, you need to sign up. Um, that's pretty common across universities, but in terms of the specific process, that'll be different. And again, look in your acceptance package information, your pre-departure information, your ISEP account, talk to your student services officer if you have any questions or concerns about that process. Um, and as a follow up to that, does anyone have a particular course that you were really happy with that you really enjoyed that you've taken this semester? Um, I have. So I'm an ecology major and I'm really in interested in entomology. So if you don't know what it is, it's just like science of insects kind of weird maybe you could think it's weird but it's really interesting so I take a class here it's called insect systematic and evolution and we have to do a collection of 60 different family of insects so we do a lot of field trip to collect um, insects basically and it's really fun and yeah it's really different from home because the class is in like we are not a lot of uh, students and we have like undergrad, but also master's student and even PhDs. So it's really crazy to just hear about everybody's situation in the class. And I really like this class. It's my favorite one so far. You have a favorite bug that you have found? On one of your oh, I found some crazy bugs here. Uh, <laughs> some beetles that I've never seen before. A lot of butterflies to a lot of bees. There is so many bees on campus because they have a big bee lab. It's like so interesting. And yeah, I have a whole collection now. So I don't know if I can get it back home. I hope so. Um, for me, I would say I have one class which is called um principles in rhetoric and writing. So at first I thought that it's kind of boring because we talked a lot about like the history of rhetoric and stuff like that. But as we got on with the class, we were like discussing a lot and we were like most of the time in class just discussing about like uh, current topics that are like, I don't know, somehow related to rhetoric. And it was really interesting. And um, like through this whole like speaking and environment I would say it got really personal also with the teacher which is really nice I would say and we're also just I don't know 20 students so um, you get to know them really easily and also we had an uh, event uh, last week for that class where we had to like do a public presentation at like a student event where like also other NAU students could participate and come watch us talking and stuff like that 
And I talked about the differences between uh, studying here at NEU and in Austria. And it was really like interesting and also fun to see um, what uh, like a lot of NEU students didn't know about Austria, like how different it is to, to study there. And that we, for example, have classes that are like mainly lecture based and where you don't even like have to attend where attendance is like voluntary and stuff like that. So it was really like interesting to also see that. I'm taking a pretty interesting class at Korea University where they're inviting different former diplomats or former um, workers within the government and they do a lecture over a chosen topic, which is really interesting because I want to possibly go into that career field. And since Korea University is fairly well known for like politics and international relations, they invite like these well-known diplomats there. And last week there was um, a lecture on climate change and what Korea is doing. And I just found it very interesting. And the fact that like I get to hear from people in my possible career field and that this is even an opportunity is really cool to me. So, and it's only one day a week, which is really nice for when you have like a lot of studying in midterms as well. So cool lecture time from, from former diplomats and stuff here. Great, well, um, we only have a few minutes left. So I'm gonna ask briefly, Emma, for you to respond to this question, because we've gotten it three times in the chat, which is how is the public transportation in Seoul? Um, so if you wanna answer that quickly, and then I'll have one more question for the whole group and we can end after that. Public transportation is the best thing ever in Korea. Um, it's so easy to even get to like other cities so far, at least that we figured it out. Bus, well, you you get a little, you get a little card and you just scan it into the bus, the subway. Um, and then there's, you have to get a specific app, honestly, to travel in Korea called Kakao Maps because Google Maps does not really work as well in Asia. So that that's one thing, but you, it's very easy to get around. It's very, very clean and efficient. And the app even tells you if it's like a busy bus or a not busy bus and when it's coming. So I'd say it's it's so easy here, especially compared to America where you have to drive mostly everywhere. Great, so um, I think we just have three questions left. I don't know if we can get to them in two minutes, but let's try it. <laughs> um, how have you budgeted your money for spending things on trips, going out for food, et cetera? And then uh, for Colleen and Christina, this one, this person said, you seem very well versed in English. Uh, they said, I'm fluent in Japanese and I'm going to Japan through ISAP. Did you face any barriers that aren't? Did, do you face any problems that aren't to do with a language barrier? Is there any, is there going to be another panel with Japanese study abroaders? I'm afraid there's not. This is the last panel, um, but we can connect you with study uh, Japan students um, who are going to Japan or students that have studied abroad there or are currently there. Um, you'll just want to connect with your student services officer and they can connect you with people from there. So that was the second question. And then the third question was for how, Emma, how many to total classes did you end up taking? So. Those are the three questions, whoever wants to answer, whichever ones, feel free. Um, and the other thing is, if any of our panelists want to put their Instagram handles into the chat, someone asked if they could connect with you on Instagram as well. Uh, I'll go first uh, quickly. So how to budget your money, I would say it's up to you. I personally worked all summer for this uh, going abroad trip. So I had a lot of money in my bank account only for like trips and uh, going to the cinema or going to buy food or anything like that. Um, I didn't follow what I needed to follow in order to money because I was like, I'm just going to be here one semester in my whole life. So I was like, it's okay. I can just spend all of my money. <laughs> I probably shouldn't, but you know it's a once in a lifetime experience so 
yeah and about study lang uh, language barrier i would say i don't have any so maybe sometime i don't get some jokes but i would just say i don't understand it people explain it to me uh people are really nice about like um the way i don't understand they're always like explaining things to me um yeah i don't think there is any other language barrier people are really nice about it they always want to help us if we're doing like a mistake when we're still picking they're just telling us that's not this way you should, you should try to, to, to tell this way and i really like it because i'm here to learn uh english too so yeah and just for everybody who wants to follow me on instagram it's colleen uh, c-o-l-i-n-e underscore abroad so if you want to ask me any question just dm me and i would answer anything literally anything you want and yeah i would be happy to answer your questions yeah for me for the money um issue i would say the pandemic made it a bit easier to save money because there was not a lot to do and to go out or spend money on food or whatever so i did save a lot of money during like the whole lockdown situation i would say and also um i did work a lot before i got to to the us so which is why i was able also to save a, lot, a bit of money for that also i know that um there is this stipend you get via ISAP, um which is depending on also I think where you where you are so which is your like um host university you either get like an, a stipend uh which is like money or you get like a meal stipend which you can like spend for a meal plan and other than that I would also say I don't worry that much about money because I'm only here for one semester so I want to enjoy this this time and don't worry about that that much I can do that when I'm back home I would say um and for language barriers I would also say I did never like encounter any like really difficulties um maybe sometimes if people wear masks and um talk like really um like in a quiet uh way or something um it's harder to understand but other than that I would say it's fine it was fine for me so far and yeah other than that I also put my Instagram in the chat so if you have any questions just feel free to contact me yes so I ended up getting into four classes for those of you who were interested in knowing so it's a fairly light schedule because I wanted to focus on like getting into Korean culture and everything as well and for my budget, I would say the the stipend again is like good thing to depend on, especially because in Korea, using your Korean debit card doesn't give you fees and using your American debit card. Sometimes there are fees on different things. So you do have to look into that for a specific country. And also there are a lot of tourist attractions that are very, very cheap or very or free. All the museums about history are free. Um, all the palaces are like one dollar, which is very reasonable, and even like going up the towers and stuff are fairly reasonable as well. So I think being able to work your budget in Korea is it's it's fairly easy, and transportation is also cheaper than a lot of American transportation as well. But if you do go a lot of places all the time, it does add up. So you have to think about that in your budget as well. Um, I think my biggest budget question is just going to all these cute cafes if anyone knows about korean cafes <laughs> they're everywhere and it's nice to study outside of the dorm room so make sure to like put all these things in your budget and just uh i guess it'll work out <laughs> i think that's such great advice and i just want to say how much I appreciate our panelists for joining us today and sharing their perspectives and their stories and their advice and even their Instagrams in the chat. So thank you so much for doing that. I know that everyone really appreciates hearing your perspective since you are currently abroad. Um, and as I mentioned in the chat, if you have any follow-up questions, you can reach out to your student services officer, your ISAP student services officer, 
whose information is in your ISEP account. If you don't have an ISEP account, you can email us at info, I-N-F-O, at ISEP.org. Um, and I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who's attended this panel today. You all had some really, really great questions. I really, really appreciate all the questions that came in and all your thoughtful um, thoughtful questions in the chat and in the Q&A box. Um, and I just appreciate everyone being here and I will say goodbye. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching.